This podcast is brought to you by Audible. Have you been wanting to read more, but don't seem to have the time? Well, with Audible, you can read your books without having to find the extra time in your busy schedule. Stuck in traffic on your way home from work? Why not marathon the Harry Potter books? In the gym and want to learn about the First Lady? Well, you can listen to Becoming Michelle Obama while doing Leg Day. And if you go to audibletrial.com slash cultivate, you get a month free of Audible. That includes one credit that you can trade in for any audiobook of your choice, access to thousands of audiobooks free to listen to with your account, and best of all, you have access to all of your favorite podcasts in the app as well. So be sure to go to my link, audibletrial.com slash cultivate. That's C-U-L-T-I-V, the number eight, to sign up for a free month of Audible and start reading today. Thank you, Audible, for supporting the show. We are. We are. We are Cultivate. 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 We are Cultivate. Hello and welcome to a special mini-sode of Ye Old Crime, the show where Maddie and I discuss the funny, strange, and obscure crimes of yesteryear every Wednesday. This special bi-weekly segment is called Can You Crack the Cramp Word, which is slang for a difficult or obscure term, which I thought was very fitting. And with me today is Anne Marie from Armchair Historians. And before we begin, I'd like to give her the opportunity to tell us a little more about herself and her show before we start the game. Thank you for having me, Lindsay. I Mm -hmm. first want to just say how much I do love your show. And uh, you were on my my show, I think, last year, and you talked about some really interesting stuff, the way that the Victorians like to poison themselves. (laughs) And... (laughs) just really good at killing themselves we'll just go we'll just say that i learned so much so yeah i i'm a podcaster like yourself and so i host and produce armchair historians and it's a podcast where history is the touchstone to the conversation because i feel like a lot of really meaningful conversations come out of talking about history. Mm -hmm. And so that was the idea to the podcast when I started it. And I, it's an interview style podcast. I have people on the show like yourself Mm -hmm. that are, I like to call us armchair historians. Mm -hmm. I do have real life historians sometimes, but, you know, I think deep down we're all just armchair historians looking for the meaning of life and history, right? Yeah. So, and like I said, I always think about your podcast and I get giddy because you're combining history and true crime, which (laughs) to me is I'm in heaven. (laughs) It is, it is fun. And, you know, it's, it's interesting because it's some, it's kind of like a, a niche subset of history that I never really like anticipated falling into. But then as I started kind of researching more and more cases, I was like, this is actually really fascinating because there's some stuff out there that you find that is just like, where did that even come from? Because you don't hear about it. So it's kind of fun. It's a fun, yeah, it's just kind of a fun journey, fun concept to kind of play off of. I love it. And you do, I have to say, sometimes I catch you talking like somebody from the Victorian era, the way that you put your words <laughs> together and, you know, talk. Sometimes I think maybe she's like reincarnated from the Victorian <laughs> era. Maybe I was a ballerina that went up in flames after getting too close to the <laughs> gaslight. <laughs> yeah. Rolled a little too close to the edge of the stage. <laughs> oh, yeah. You'll have to listen to it. The episode I was on for of Anne Marie's show to get that reference, which I will link to in the show notes in case you're interested oh, in checking that out. Thank you. Yeah. So like, as you mentioned, the premise of your show is the question, what's your favorite history? So I'm curious, what's yours? I knew you were going to say that. I knew you were going <laughs> to ask me that. So I'm kind of prepared, but not really. My favorite history is, you know, it's not a particular history, but it's a type of history Mm -hmm. I like histories that are hidden. I like to learn about 
uh, the almost erased, often erased history of LGBTQ plus community. I've had some really amazing guests and I have some coming up uh, in the not too distant future. I love stories about women, especially women who persevered like Ida B. Wells, Mm -hmm. uh, like uh, one of my favorite histories, which I'm going to try to do a a limited series uh, podcast about is Clara Brown, who was a freed woman of color who came to the West in 1859. So this is before the Civil War. And she she persevered like this is a woman who was 59 years old came on a wagon train that she worked, she made, you know, the food and cleaned the clothes of the people that were on the wagon train. She came to the West in this area that I live in, and she ended up saving $10,000 in a couple of years cleaning people's clothes. And then the reason she did it is she was very hyper-focused. She wanted to go back to the South after the Civil War and find her family and friends and bring them to the West because she felt that this would be a better opportunity for them. I get chills every time I tell this story. That's amazing. uh, It's an interesting history. I love a history that is about somebody who, you know, cards were against them, but somehow... They found a way to persevere and to accomplish their dream. Yeah. Those are the kind of histories I like. Yeah, I agree. I there And there are, like you said, so many women in history that are kind of hidden that did amazing things. And yeah, I'll have to research her more because that's fascinating. I was getting goosebumps as you were telling me about it. There's not a lot of information. It's it's the kind of stuff that you really have to probably deep dive into archives in a library or something but sure the work that has been written i feel is lacking sure so yeah clara brown look her up awesome you kind of touched on that so is there a particular time period or event in history that kind of inspired you to create your show like is there anything in particular that you had an interest in or wanted to learn more about the way that this show evolved where it started the seed if you will was in massage therapy I had this massage therapist named Sarah Street who still has not come on my show by the way if you're (laughs) listening I'm still gonna hound you but we she would she was really excited about Viking history and so I'd get a massage and a history lesson at the same time and it was her passion about it that drew me in And I said to her, I said, oh, we should do a podcast about people talking about their favorite history. Mm -hmm. And that's where it started. And then when COVID hit, I decided to pick up that idea and make a podcast. And so that's where Armchair Historians came from. That's cool. Viking history is also very fascinating. There's a lot of cool stuff about Viking history. Like the fact that they went into France and Paris, I had no idea you know, things like that. Just there's a lot. There's a lot in there learning more and more as they, you know, uncover things. So it's a fun mm-hmm. history. Yeah, there's I stumbled upon an article and I think I saved it because I want to at some point do an episode on it. But I, I stumbled upon an article where they found a grave for a Viking woman who was like a, a warrior and she had tons of you know, like weapons and stuff buried with her. I think she had a horse buried with her and they'd never seen that before for a woman. So she Mm, must have been badass, really, you know, important in their community if she would have had that kind of honor to be buried like that. Well, if you do do a deep dive in, feel free to come back and talk on the show about Viking history. I've not had anybody talk about Viking history yet. Yeah, I'll let you know if I do, because there are some things you stumble upon and it's just like, wow, that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. I never thought I was going to get so into history when I was growing up, but it's just kind of something that I... Me either. Me ...fell either. into. Yeah. Like, I really feel like our school kind of does us a little bit of a disservice in making us fo- making kids focus so much on, like, the different battles in the Civil War and the different battles in the American Revolution, because it's like, yes, it is important to know about that. But at the same time, there's so many other aspects of history that are also 
very fascinating and very worth learning about. Like it wasn't until I was 30 some years old that I learned a lot more about the internment camps for the Asian Americans during World War II, you know, which was awful, but it was never brought up at all in my history class. Yeah, I grew up in an era, especially where the tarnished side of American history was not presented. And I, you know, it's just, we're getting so deep and this is supposed to be funny, but... I know, (laughs) we'll get there. (laughs) It's it's that continuity to the past. It's like I, I geek out over family history and learning about my ancestors and trying to put a face on them. And when I can't, I look at the people of the time and where they were. And it is that connection. It's like all those people that came before to make this happen, to have you and me sitting here with headphones on our head, talking about history. Like it just, it's awe inspiring when you think, Mm -hmm. when I think about it. Yeah, it's very true. My last question, and I think I already kind of alluded to it. So you might have already kind of answered it. But as you mentioned, you have, you've had a variety of guests on your show. Of those What are some events or sort of time periods that they shared with you that you found really fascinating? You know, I have a real soft spot in my heart for the LGBTQ plus Mm -hmm. history that comes on the show because it takes a lot of digging to find the information and then a lot of thinking and trying to figure out the spin you're going to put on something. But the two that stick out is uh, the authors that wrote the book or published the book. It's called Loving a Photographic History of Men in Love, 1859 to 1950. I might've gotten the dates wrong. I was never good with dates in school. So, (laughs) but anyways, and theirs is a visual history. Two men as a young couple, they started collecting these photographs that they thought were so rare. Mm -hmm. But over the years, they came to find out that there were They were all over the place. And in Mm -hmm. some cases, so they made this beautiful coffee table book of these historical pictures. And in some cases, they were able to put the history together and present this history. And, you know, it's just a really beautiful history. And to me, that is one of my favorite episodes that I did. The other one is a book called Paper Bullets. I interviewed the author, Jeffrey Jackson, and he wrote this book about these two women who were In the uh, 20s, they were artists in Paris. They were very kind of surrealistic, on the cutting edge. And they ended up retiring as a couple. And they were able to kind of hide under this relationship of being stepsisters, but they were really lovers. And they ended up fighting for the resistance in Jersey, which is one of the Channel Islands that was occupied by the Germans. And it's called paper bullets because they would write kind of demoralizing messages that they would put in places where German soldiers would find them to basically bring down their morale. And it it was an amazing history. So that, I mean, that's a really unusual history that I, if you have an opportunity, check out the book paper bullets. So I'm giving you really long answers. I'm sorry. I'm going to make this not a short episode. No, that's totally fine. Yeah, that's a lot of stuff that I did not know about. So you're giving me a lot of homework, which is good, because I like learning. (laughs) Just listen to my show. (laughs) I know. Honestly, go listen to her show, because there's lots of fun stuff you'll learn. Hello, my name is Anne-Marie Cannon, and I'm the host of Armchair Historians. What's your favorite history? Each episode begins with this one question. Our guests come from all walks of life. YouTube celebrities, comedians, historians, even neighbors from the small mountain community that I live in. They're people who love history and get really excited about a particular time, place, or person from our distant or not so distant past. The jumping off point is the place where they became curious, then entered the rabbit hole into discovery. Fueled by an unrelenting need to know more, we look at history through the filter of other people's eyes. Armchair Historians is a Belgian Rabbit production. Stay up to date with us through Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Wherever you listen to your podcast, that is where you'll find us. Armchair Historians is an independent, commercial-free podcast. All right, that was the last of my questions. So are you ready for the Victorian slang terms? No, but go ahead. Hit me <laughs> <up>. <laughs> no, no one's ever ready. <laughs> I think you've had two people who got the answer right. Yep. 
Okay. Yep. I've had two people guess get at least one of the terms right. So I have never I have not had anybody guess both of them correctly yet. Okay. I'm not sure what I'll do when someone gets both of them correct, but it may happen. So we'll see. So your first term is hedgeborn. Hedgeborn. Okay, so this is Victorian and I'm thinking of a hedge. So I'm thinking of maybe it's a manicured hedge in that if you're hedgeborn, you're born into money or status or prestige. It's actually quite the opposite. Hedgeborn <laughs> means that you're lowborn or illegitimate. Oh my word. Okay. Yeah. So I don't know if that means like I was, you were I was, born behind a hedge or something. Like that's <laughs> just a weird Oh, you know, that makes sense. See, I'm thinking of English gardens and things like that. Yeah. So I'm thinking of the hedgerow. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. Okay. Maybe the hedge was the barrier between the two classes. So I think you were onto something with the the hedge, you know, but they were just born on the opposite side, not the prestigious they were born side. Under the hedge, as you said. Yes. <laughs> and then the mother went back to the fields and started farming. Yeah, something. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Or went back to start washing more clothes or preparing meals or something. All right. Your second term is nipperkin. Ooh, nipperkin. Ooh. You know, I think. I think of nipper and I think of those little bottles with the alcohol in it. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say a drunkard, like somebody who likes to drink a lot. Nipperkin. You were, you were right. It's a small glass <laughs> of liquor. Yes! <laughs> you did it. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> oh my God. That was awesome. Oh I can freaking die now. I'm good. <laughs> I cracked a cramp word. I'm done. The rest of the year's canceled. I'm done. <laughs> I'm just your run of the mill alcoholic. That's why I figured it out. Well, you know, they have like, you know, like little nip of alcohol. Yeah. So that's that awesome. That is so interesting. I wonder if that's where the term for the little bottles came from. It's Probably. just a nip. Yeah. It's just a small glass of liquor. Yep. It's just a nip. <laughs> well, this has really made my day. There you go. <laughs> now you can just be like, yep, I got a obscure Victorian slang term. Yep. And now you can start using it. <laughs> That's right. Nipperkin. Oh, he's a real nipperkin. <laughs> I, li I live in a town of nipperkins. <laughs> there you go. Well, I would like to thank Anne-Marie for joining me today for Can You Crack the Cramp Word? And before we go, can you please tell our listeners where they can find you on social media? Sure. So I'm actually on Twitter, which is a place that I like to converse with history podcasters like yourself. Mm -hmm. And my handle is at Armchair Histor one because obviously Armchair Historians was not available. And then I'm also on Instagram at Armchair Historians. It's all just one word, my name, for the podcast. And I'm also on YouTube, Armchair Historians. Yeah, and Facebook. Yep. I always forget to ask this question. When do new episodes of your show come out? Uh, I try to get them out on Tuesday. That doesn't always happen, but generally Tuesday. I, I feel that there are Weekly. some days there are fun some days where I'm up super late on like Tuesday night going, Oh god. I can't I can't. I can't. You should uh, never post it on a, a late night because well, I don't know about you, but I will make mistakes with my yeah. editing where it's like and then it's out there and somebody's listened to it. But yeah. yeah. Tuesdays. Tuesdays. Awesome. Like I said, we will have a link to her show in the show notes. I highly encourage you to check it out. I will have a link to the episode that I was a guest on, as well as the rest of her channels. And it was very nice having you. I appreciate you coming on the show. Oh, I was super excited to come on your podcast for this. And I'm you've made my probably my year at least because <laughs> I did get one of them right. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, you're very welcome. And as always, I'm Lindsay. And I'll see you next time with another tale as old as crime. <laughs>